Yes, Mr. All Rats at Chess.com, continuing my video series on the correspondence team match play between my video lessons group and the team Carpe Diem. Uh, this is played on board, board 125. Our man is Lerlin Gregg. He's playing against Wenlock. Uh, high 1600 rating versus a high 1500 rating. And let's have a look at the two games. Okay. We see a French defense and the advanced variation. And here Black plays a move I've been condemning in this video series, A6. Uh, bef but let's we'll talk about that in just a moment. But White doesn't really find a way to exploit this. As a matter of fact, White gets a losing game very quickly. Uh, here's the point of, B, of uh, A6. Uh, Black is trying to get some activity on the queen side. But this bishop is called the French bishop for the reason it's shut in behind some pawns. And now Black has succeeded in shutting it in behind some more pawns. So, uh, unless black is trying to get a c4 and b4 break at some point, even then this bishop still may not have a future, it's hard to see exactly what black is trying to do. But this is one strategy, you know, attacking the direction the pawn chain points. But here you're, you're based on going against d4. That's why the queen belongs on b6. It's a little slower to stop and, and do this. Meanwhile, what white should be doing is getting ready to play f5, he should be attacking the direction his pawn chain points. But this doesn't happen. Uh, now the bishop does go to b7. Now black is behind in developing his king side. White is behind in developing his queen side. So we'll see how this turns out. Uh, I don't think this was the right move, although it looks logical in a way. Uh, this bishop is uh, white's bad bishop, so to speak, because it's blocked in by a bunch of pawns, and this is Black's good bishop. So trading off might make some sense, although in this position, you know, taking, uh, Black will just take back with the knight, getting his knight developed, and that knight is preparing to thwart uh, an eventual f5 move uh, that Black wants, or White wants to do. But here White kind of drops the ball and falls into a tactic. Uh, his knight is now overworked. It's guarding both g5 and d4, and white's going to lose a pawn and doesn't have uh, enough compensation for it. And off come the queens, and down goes a pawn for, uh, uh, for white. So now they both start getting their pieces developed, but white's never really in this game, and black misses a number of chances to uh, win it easier. Although, you know, he, the moves he played were adequate. We'll see what I'm what I'm talking about when we get there. And uh, here, Black gets ready to double rooks. And now, uh, B4 is a mistake, but Black doesn't see it. Maybe he just got lost in the tactics. But it's a simple matter to uh, go ahead and capture this pawn. Uh, it's a free pawn. What can White do? Well, White can try Knight takes B5, but what happens is, in this position, just about every piece white owns is going to be uh, under under assault here. Uh, let's go ahead and take this knight. Now, uh, uh, white is a piece down and needs to play rook c7. But here comes g5, and now if the knight moves, uh, this bishop falls, and... and uh, uh, black's going to be a piece up, and if you take, if you take here, let's see, uh, just simply capture this knight, and black is going to be a piece up. So maybe he just missed the, uh, the tactical implications of all this. Let's back it up slightly. Okay, so now b4 but the move black plays is perfectly fine uh, he's preserving his pawn advantage improving his position and now white covers the pawn but black misses another way to win a pawn knight takes e5 because the knight on c3 is not protected so with similar uh, and it's well it's actually not similar because i'm now white no longer has knight takes b5 but anyway uh black brings the knight back to e b8 and you know black's still fine he just missed a quicker win now he's after e5 and 
White covers the pawn on e5, and black penetrates with his rook. And here, uh, black misses uh, quick win with g5. Here's that move again. g5 attacks the knight, which covers the bishop, and uh, white's going to be down a piece. But black missed it, played knight b6. And after rook e2, I believe it's still there, g5. But uh, he, he comes into c4 instead. And now he tries g5. He sees it a move too late, but white has a little resource. Let's get rid of this. And now the French bishop is unleashed. And black's just a clear pawn ahead. Uh, white needs to get his knight to safety. And uh, no, white doesn't really have any kind of cohesion with his pieces. It's a simple uh, matter for black to... Uh, to uh, consolidate his position and and end up uh, with a winning ending. Okay, so now g3. Now this, somewhere in here, white misses bishop f3. Although it comes up in a in a in a next move or two. Uh, king f8. Now it comes up, but you, even though there's a fork, uh, black can't keep the piece. But this just forces off a bunch of exchanges, and now. Uh, White traps the bishop, but he's losing a lot of pawns for it. So let's see. White now has what five pawns to seven, and his pawns are starting to going to start to fall now. There goes another one. Even though he gets the piece back, there goes another one, and g4 is loose. There, there it goes, and offers a knight trade, which White can't take. And then suddenly, Black's keeping all of his pawns. Now Black still has seven pawns. White has two. Mercy. So I don't know why, why, why White played on. He gave up another pawn, but he gets it back. And it's just a simple matter of uh, tying tying White up, make tie his knight down to guarding c1. <coughs> Excuse me. And just slowly bring the king up, get the other pawn running, and White's defenseless, and... Uh, the Black King is coming in, and at this point, uh, White decided that was enough. He's just going to resign this game. Okay, so let's reset it, flip the board, load up the other game, and I always wonder what move it's going to start it out at. Should start it out at move 1 or 0. Oh, puts it on move 19. Why did it pick move 19? I have no clue. Okay. So... Pretty simple system so far. It's very equal. But here, what, what, watch what white does. H3. I mean, why, guys? Why do you play these rook pawn moves? Are you trying to preserve the bishop? Are you trying to get an attack going? Well, just develop a piece. Okay? Let him have your dang bishop. Okay? Bring it back. And look, you've got a potential attack on the H file. Okay? Uh, what's what's black done? He's castled and developed a bishop to e7. You know, yeah, white hasn't done much himself, but but uh, this looks good for white. You know, rook pawn moves just they just don't have a place in these in your game. Okay, they need to be stopped. Okay, let's uh, so he plays h3 and the game. Pretty much stays level here for a while. Uh, we'll see the point when uh, black hands an initiative over to white. Now, one thing that white's missing is one uh, one tempo. He could be a little closer to getting his development complete, but it he doesn't because he pushed his rook pawn. Uh, now white's picked up an outside uh, pawn majority, and similar to the last game. Uh, White has traded off his bad bishop, you know, the one on the co color of his pawns, for the opponent's good, good bishop, and Black is saddled with a bad bishop again. But that bishop becomes a good bishop here in, in just a moment. And here, I really think that Black is comfortably equalized. Uh, he's got a nice pawn center. The pawn on d5 is weak, but but that's the only only real weakness in Black position. I don't think the outside queen. Pawn majority is meaning anything at all here, although white does try to get it going here in a little bit. And both sides maneuver, 
back and forth for a little bit and not much is going on and as I say I think the game is uh, even uh, h6 is okay I guess make make some air for the king uh, but it seems like here black is kind of bored for what to do putting the king on f8 could run it into trouble sometimes you don't want to send your king to the center too early you know you cast them to the side for a reason and one of the reasons is the uh, the amount of pieces on the board and in this case almost all of them are there only one set of bishops have been traded off but it's not something white can exploit and white kind of bounces around a little bit and repeats his, his night wiggle waggles back and he makes a trade but he hasn't really gained anything you know there's black still controlling the center uh, but eventually uh, black is going to be induced into creating a weakness uh, now the the bishop that was bad wasn't bad is traded off and you know once again I think the game is still pretty even uh, but here black didn't have to play e4 I don't think he should have done that but it, it still it's not enough for white to get a much of an advantage although he does slowly start sl surely start to get one here and nice eyeballing d6 he stops that g4 would be uh, too weakening this knight gonna hop in to h4 and f3 and white's in trouble anyway a6 and you know black has this one weakness this pawn on d d4 uh, and white does start doing a little bit of maneuvering trying to get somewhere here and uh, a4 is played with the idea to try to expand and get a pass pawn but uh, uh, white's carefully slowly maneuvering and here maybe white should try b5 or he has to prepare it yeah that's right he has to prepare it and maybe black panicked a little bit here maybe black should just allow the pawn to go to b5 uh, get this rook active put it on f6 uh, let white get a pass pawn black has more than enough pieces to blockade it but by pushing b5 black creates a second weakness in this position and now I think white has a clear advantage simply because both of these pawns are weak and it's just a matter of doing the right maneuvering to get somewhere and white immediately takes the open file and starts pressuring the weak pawn there and black kind of stuck defending here now there's a serious threat of a discovered check whoops this way or maybe even this way it's a check and a free pawn uh, black blocks that the discovery and white keeps maneuvering and you know black kind of relegated just uh, thump, shuffling his pieces back and forth while white slowly improves his position and now finally white's put a third attacker on d5 and that pawn is going to drop uh, and probably white just assumed the game would be winning but I don't think he played it correctly which rook would you take with uh, I think it's better to take with the d4 rook because it opens up this diagonal you want to be giving checks if you can you know this king could be a little exposed uh, this is still fine but but uh, that rook was better posted on d6 and the rook on d4 maybe he wants to keep to keep pressure on uh, on e4 but I think opening up getting trying to get the queen in the game was a better idea so black chases the white queen out and here uh, I think white dropped the ball again and missed a chance for clear advantage rook d6 seems to be the, a very strong move uh, you know it puts it puts uh, uh, black and all kind of a pickle here uh, let, let's see just to give you an example of what could go wrong for black if black takes our place here now this is enforced naturally I'm just going to show you this is kind of what white's steering for and now there's a pin on this rook and white can slowly improve his position bring his king a little closer to the center then liquidate on f6 and easily win the king and pawn ending 
but uh, this doesn't happen. Uh, but had White uh, simply retreated his rook to d2, this this reinstates that pin that I was talking about. Uh, that rook can't move, and Black is suddenly in a little bit of trouble here. Okay, let's break the pin. Well, suddenly it's pinned again. See, now the rook can't move because of a mate threat on h8. And I think I think Black's going to have a very hard time holding this position. I think it's, his game's going to fall apart uh, very shortly here. Uh, this position is just too strong for White. But anyway, what happens is he uh, plays rook d6, and then Black plays a good move, plays queen e5. Let's see, I oh, didn't play that. There's kind of fine. There it is, queen e5. Okay, and I'm thinking White probably thinks he's winning, and offers a queen trade. And just figures that after the queens come off, I'm winning. I have a protected pass pawn, and the game is mine. But there's one problem. Uh, the activity of the black rook and the black king. Black immediately starts getting his king centralized and, and is able to achieve a quick draw. I'll show a better way for white to try for a win. But, but you see, the fact, if you're going to be down a pawn, you want to be in an ending. You want to be a rook and pawn ending. And this is a good example because this black king is just getting too active. Uh, now it's penetrating into white's position, and now the, the rook is tied down to guarding a pawn, and there's nothing uh, white can do about this for a long time. And we'll just kind of run through the moves here, but black has got, got this under control now, and white can't make any progress. And although he tries, uh, now black gives up uh, a c4, but it's still not enough. Uh, the black rook has gotten active, and white offers a rook trade, but black wants no part of that. And you know, as much as white's trying, he can't he can't crack the uh, uh, the black position, and the game ends in a draw by repetition here in just a couple of moves. So this is well played by black, but let's go back. I'll. I don't think white can win, but I'll show a better try for the win. Clearly, letting that king get into uh, c4 was not good. It uh, pretty much assured black a draw. So let's just go back to king e6, and let's cut the king off. Let's stop that king from coming. Well, black has resources here. Let's start with a check, and then put this rook behind the pawn. Now he threatened to take this pawn off, and making the, this rook defend it again, just from a different square. But at least this king is cut off. But I think that black has adequate resources here. Uh, just start checking, and it, 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 there's some tricks here. It looks like maybe white's going to win here with c6. See, the point being, if rook a2, c7... Rook a8, and then rook d8, and black and white wins. But surprisingly, uh, black has resources here. Check. Okay, if king comes up here, uh, black just comfortably plays uh, rook c1, and uh, he's behind the pawn, and and appears to be probably winning it. So here comes another check, and now, if the king comes up here, black just simply returns the rook to this square, and the threat is to put the rook on uh, c1, and the pawn is stopped. And unfortunately, white can't play rook c4 because he drops his rook. So, uh, this pawn is halted in its tracks. If rook d2, you try to build a bridge, uh, yeah, you can build a bridge, but the problem is you're going to lose this pawn. Now, does white have enough here? Probably not. Uh, that's my best guess. Now, it might be risky to try uh, f5, but then again, maybe not. 
f5, king here, now black just finds a waiting move, uh, something like h5, now white can't go forward because suddenly a trick comes and black gets a pawn through and black would win. So with correct play, black should draw it, but I think uh, uh, white could have made black earn it a little more, find some of these intricate moves in a rook and pawn ending. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for looking at this, these games, and I'll be back as soon as I can with another. There's a few more results in, and, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you.